When most people think of the internet, they perceive it as a virtual wireless world floating in the clouds. But in reality, the internet is a vast network of physical cables spanning the globe. From watching this video on YouTube, to sending a WhatsApp message, reading a post on X, or scrolling and laughing at Instagram Reels, nearly all internet traffic in the world flows through a network of undersea fiber optic cables. This map here illustrates the extensive network of undersea cables crisscrossing the planet, sustaining the internet, and enabling modern digital lifestyle. Recently, in May of 2024, internet users across East and Southern Africa, including Kenya, reported degraded internet quality. Despite subscribing to different internet service providers, or ISPs for short, the slow speeds were experienced universally. Even businesses, government agencies, and banks were affected. The culprit? Undersea cable issues. So in this video, we'll delve into how the internet functions, the role of these undersea cables, and what's behind the recent connectivity wars in Kenya. So let's get started. Before you can watch this video, the journey began with us uploading it to YouTube servers in the US. These servers, which are essentially powerful computers, store and manage access to the video. Now your task is to connect to these servers via the internet to access the video. But how does this transfer happen? There are two primary methods of transmitting internet data globally. One is satellites and the other is fiber optic cables, which run in the oceans. While satellite technology such as Starlink exists, it is still evolving and currently less efficient than undersea cables. So over 90% of global internet traffic relies on undersea cables due to their reliability and lower latency. So whether you're using Wi-Fi, Ethernet, or even cellular internet, the path ultimately leads to undersea cables. We've also produced an episode explaining how Starlink as a satellite technology works. You can watch the video by clicking up here or using the link in the description. So suppose you're watching the video on your laptop. The laptop is connected to the internet via Wi-Fi or via an Ethernet cable which is connected to a router. The router receives internet from your local internet service provider, such as Zuku, Safaricom, Fiber, and others. But where do they get their internet? Just as customers pay them for internet access, ISPs themselves pay upstream ISPs for internet access. So who are upstream ISPs? These are ISPs who act as, in quotes, ISPs for ISPs. They provide ultra-high bandwidth connections between local ISPs. They don't connect directly to residential subscribers like you and me, but they can connect to large businesses that need high bandwidth internet. Some upstream ISPs operating in Kenya include Tata Communications and Level 3 Communications. We will attempt to explain how internet traffic works, but in reality, the situation is often more complex. The basic idea is, all ISPs have an upstream provider until you reach tier 1 ISPs. Now these are large international companies that lay and maintain undersea cables. Tier 1 ISPs also connect to each other to keep everything connected in the whole system. And that is how essentially internet traffic works. And it is how you are able to find anything on the internet as long as it is connected to this web at any given point. Some widely known tier 1 ISPs in the world include Orange, Verizon, AT&T, Tata, and others. Companies that handle heavy internet traffic such as Google, Facebook, Microsoft, and Amazon also own private networks of undersea cables that they also lease as a business product. Actually, a majority of undersea cables in the world are owned by these internet companies. 
Now back to Kenya. The country experienced degraded internet quality in May and local internet providers cited faults with undersea cables. So what could have happened? Let's investigate. Undersea cables are specialized fiber optic cables that are expensive and difficult to install. And yet despite their importance, undersea cables are vulnerable to damage, whether accidental or deliberate. Accidental damage could come from fishing equipment, ship anchors, and even curious sharks trying to read our DMs. And in other instances, undersea cables can be deliberately sabotaged for geopolitical reasons or espionage. No particular reasons have been given by the companies responsible as to what caused the damage to East and Central Africa cables. No matter the cause of the damage, internet traffic now has to be rerouted to other available cables and this can cause congestion and ultimately slower speeds. It's like a traffic jam but in the seas. So what are we supposed to do? Good question, stay tuned. Repairing undersea cables is a daunting, time-consuming and costly task given the challenges of working in the ocean's depths. But more often than not, these cables are installed with backups in place in anticipation of any damage. And lucky for us, there are other providers too. This allows for traffic to be rerouted to available cables. It could take weeks or even months to fix the problem depending of course on the extent of the damage. On the flip side of that, that difficulty also makes it very challenging to sabotage these cables. Suppose you accidentally sent the wrong photo to the office group and since it's too late to delete it, you've decided to shut the whole internet down to save yourself. First, you'll need some very special diving gear and a very big wire cutter. Additionally, you'll need a way to protect yourself from the thousands of volts of electricity flowing through the cables. Electricity needed to power the signal boosters, or commonly referred to as repeaters, which are installed along with the cables. So we wish you all the best. If high-speed internet is crucial to you, especially as a business or emergency service provider, then you might want to think about satellite internet technology such as Starlink. Such technology could serve as a viable alternative during such rare but possible downtimes. Watch our video linked in the description to learn more about Starlink. And as we conclude, here's a fun fact. How fast do you think the undersea cables transmit data? Well, submarine cables or undersea cables transmit data using fiber optic technology, or essentially lasers, allowing data to travel nearly at the speed of light, which is around 300,000 kilometers per second. Keep in mind that light can travel around the globe seven times in just one second. So just one of these undersea cables can handle millions of people watching videos or sending messages or emails simultaneously without ever slowing down. And that's it for this video. We hope you found it informative and educative. If you did, don't forget to like, share, leave a comment and keep supporting our channel. We genuinely appreciate it. And if you're sad that the video ended, Subscribe to the channel and you will never be sad again, ever.